Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Good, thank you. All right, uh, three after the hour. Why don't we go in and get started? Um, but uh, uh, looking through the AIs, I don't think there's anything worth. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything worth bringing up relative to the AIs, so, other than if you have one, please get to it when you get a chance. Are you going to share a screen? Oh, am I not? I thought I was. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. My fault. Okay, cool. Phew. <laughs> Can I see that little green box around it? I was all worried there for a minute. All right. Um, all right, community time. Is there anybody from the community who isn't part of the normal working group who would like to bring up a topic for discussion, whether it's an issue or question or concern or anything like that? Yeah, this is Tim. I just wanted to, to raise one thing that I thought might be of interest to, to the group. Um, so we're doing a, a big new event-driven thing. Um, and we, one thing we learned is that our basic event structure, we're really, really, really wishing we'd put in a time to live field. <laughs> Having had that there already would have made life a lot easier. Just, just saying that, something to bear in mind. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, if you, obviously you're hinting at maybe we should add one. So um, obviously, you know, feel free to open up a pull request to, to define it, and then we can discuss it. Okay, fair enough. I was talking about MQTT the, the last time that I could get here. Um, had a, I've had, unfortunately, a lot of things contending for the time. Um, I've got an MQTT sensor set up. I've got a few of them, and they're all transmitting data in a basic JSON format. So I'm trying to think about how to now get that into a cloud event. And it could just be building up the JSON on the device, sending it over MQTT or similar. Um, I'm hoping to get a blog post together with it as well and show how you can then start ingesting it through a function. Cool. Is this something that I you... I am wondering if, if cloud events is a bit too heavy weight for two sensor readings. You know, it's a lot of additional framing and context. Um... I guess the way I would answer that is that for for those use cases where it makes sense, you can use it that way. And there's always been the, the concept of taking a different event format and translating that through middleware into a cloud event for later transmission. So if your device yeah. is too small, you can still use your existing uh, uh, way of sending events out. You just have, you would just translate it on the on on another layer. Yeah, you can solve, what do they say? You can solve any problem in computer science with another layer of indirection or something like that. So yeah, maybe maybe they should just send it in a, in a plain format and then something listening as a broker um, could forward it on. So Alex, is there something in particular that you're looking for from a spec perspective or is it just, is this more of just a brainstorming exercise right now this is the the use the from the use case and community perspective um this is something that i i spoke about i think a couple of weeks ago and i've got the base work done now so i'm, I'm getting the sensor readings pulling them off mqt and sending them into a function and the, ne the next thing is to understand where to insert the cloud event framing okay so it sounds like you may have some feedback for us once you get the, the full thing up and running and, and give us feedback in terms of whether there's something wrong with the spec or it works okay or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping so. Okay. Yeah, because I think it'd be useful then, especially if you, do think, if you do find issues with the spec itself, then I think opening up issues or a pull request to actually make changes to make it better would be the next step. Um, uh, or if you feel like just providing feedback at overall um, on one of these phone calls, when you feel like it's time, uh, we can just add it to the agenda and you can sort of go through what you did and, and provide us with whatever feedback or information you think might be relevant. Thank you. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Anything else from the community? I suppose I could uh, speak briefly. Um, the uh, uh, effort so far has uh, appeared to relate to transitory uh, transmission of events. 
And one of the, the use cases that we find ourselves very interested in uh, in my team is the uh, kind of event sourced or um, uh, the, the commit log as the source of truth. Um, and that, uh, the, there seems to be, a, sorry, and I, this, I didn't prepare these statements. Um, there seems to be an assumption of, of the context of the transmission as, as being uh, capable of dealing with things like authentication and uh, validation of the contents. Um, but uh, if the uh, use case involves leaving uh, an event on a, a log and reprocessing it perhaps years later, um, the uh, ability to, uh, the, that context no longer remains. And um, so things like authentication, signing that have been discussed briefly um, uh, are, are less of a priority. Um, but uh, maybe, maybe this would be a, a good question to ask is, does the community see kind of a, a permanent retention of an event or semi-permanent if there's going to be some kind of a translation um, as part of the use case that is being addressed. Anybody have a comment on that one? No one? So from my point of view, um, I tend to look at the cloud event spec as more as a, uh, I don't know, this isn't the right phrase for it, but more of a transport mechanism or transport encoding, put it that way. And what happens to it on either side of that transport is sort of out of scope for us. So the question of the persistence of a cloud event beyond it being delivered to a, to a consumer is sort of up to them to decide. And that's not really for us to say. Okay. But I, I, that's just my two cents though. I mean, what do other people think? Having been involved in the, in the specification of several data formats over the years, um, trying to predict what people are going to do with them is a waste of time. They do surprising things. <laughs> That's true of every spec, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. just wondering if maybe a lot of the uh, authentication and authorization are usually at the transport. Is the event not more of a payload, which uh, really doesn't expect sort of higher layers to deal with a lot of the security issues? It does seem to be the general assumption. Um, so, so let me be a, provide a concrete use case. Uh, the 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 log that's being built up of events uh, written to it would contain something like uh, balance uh, updates, and um, uh, it would be appropriate for me to enter an event onto the log that uh, transferred money from my account to another account. Um, however, it would be inappropriate for Doug to enter that same event onto the log. And uh, without the context of the active connection, um, then there, there would be without some sort of extra information. And that certainly could go in the, the kind of payload uh, data section of the event uh, uh, if, if needed. So uh, bear with me. I'm just trying to bring this up as an uh, interesting thought uh, exercise. Um, but uh, there'd be no way to, using the cloud event spec, uh, ensure that uh, that event was produced by somebody authorized to do so. It seems like that this might be worth uh, just opening up an issue so people can think about it offline and, and put comments in there and we can all have a discussion in that one spot. I mean, even if we end up deciding not to do anything with it, I still think it might be useful just to document it someplace to show that we actually thought about it and we decided to do one thing or another with it based upon that discussion and people can sort of see the history of it. All right. Thank you, Doug. I will do. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. I think we got one more minute left in that in this 10 minute time slot. Any other community related issues people want to bring up? All right, cool. Moving on then. Austin. Um, last week we looked at your issue and I I just want to verify one thing, because you had a link, <clears throat> excuse me, to your issue. Um, but you were pointing to an old comment in there, and I want to make sure that the very last icon or image that you pasted in there is the right one we should be looking at, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. That's what I thought, just want to make sure. Okay, so 
last week, we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this was on the agenda. Ask people to take a look at it. Does anybody have any comments? I could chat about it briefly, Doug. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we. This all this all got started because I I suggested that maybe we could incorporate a better font that might be a little bit more modern uh, and cleaner aesthetically. Um, and uh, I took it upon myself to go do a, a quick revision to the Cloud Events logo with uh, this updated font. And as I did that, a few other people chimed in with, with other thoughts and we kind of investigated some other icons briefly, but it seemed like we were kind of falling back on, the, on the, our old icon here, except some people requested that I tried to make the CE, CNE stand out a little bit more because uh, it seemed to get lost in the, like, the general the way that the icon was flowing. So I made one simple change here. I simply just put a gap between that, that kind of bottom end of the E and the rest of the cloud, which wasn't there. And after going through a few revisions over like an hour, I, I found that this little minor change was, was the best thing that still kind of kept intact the whole balance of that, uh, of that icon in general. So one, one minor change, uh, let me know what you all think. But um, otherwise, I, I, think it's, I think it's good enough uh, for now. And uh, we should, um, I think we can proceed to shirts and stickers and all the swag. Yeah, and we, just to be clear, when we do we stickers. Need a if, version that has the tagline disconnect, just so there's two assets cut. And would you have an inverse version as well for um, darker backgrounds or darker t-shirt? Yep, is as soon as we agree. On this, I could just share the sketch file and it has, uh, and I'll quickly generate those, those alternative versions as well. Sounds good to me. Okay, so I heard a lot of people talk about how they wanted it without the tagline. So I guess uh, my, my one question is, when would the tagline appear? In what, in what situation? <clears throat> when thinking about open source projects and branding them, the first thing that comes to mind is a graphic on the top of the readme. And I, I always start there because that is, that is where you communicate to developers like first and foremost these days. So that's kind of what I had in mind as I, as I designed this thing. Um, and I just threw in a tagline. It's not the tagline. I don't know if we really have a set tagline. But uh, yeah, that's the context which I, I imagined while I was designing this. Okay. So that, that makes some sense. So, um, so I guess two questions here. Um, what, what do people, like, let me phrase it differently. Is there any objection then to changing our logo to be the, the, the new cloud thing with the cloud events word underneath as depicted here in this last comment? That sounds great. Okay, not hearing any objection. Um, do we wanna have a discussion at some point about the tagline itself, meaning the actual text in there? Or are people okay with it as is? I think since it's not going to be used for anything right now, since it's not going to be included in assets, it's fine to like save that for a future discussion. Might be a good GitHub issue. Yeah. There may, there may be something uh, that we can do to jazz it up a bit. Okay. So Austin, can you take an AI to open up an issue, discuss the tagline, but, and then in, in the meantime, finish up what needs to be done to switch out our icon? Sure thing. Excellent, thank you very much. So let's just document this. All right, cool. Anything else related to logos? Once the new one is uh, ready, um, I can start ordering stickers. I had to get a coupon code from uh, Dan Khan, so I can order a whole bunch of stickers through the store for free. Um, but then you should be able to order your, your own stuff through there. Unfortunately, they don't have um, t-shirts available through the CNCF store. So if you want to do t-shirts, um, have to go someplace else, whether we do it as a group or individual companies want to do it, that's up to us to decide, I guess, later on. I can kind of ready to go. I'll discuss that later, I guess. Cool. Right. Yep. Anything else related to logos? 
Rather than a t-shirt, maybe a stationary is appropriate. Stationary? What made you think of that one? Like an envelope. So we can mail people letters. An envelope? Man, that's old school, buddy. <laughs> no, he's not talking about using it. He's talking about it because it's funny. I know. I'm getting used to Scott's sense of humor. It takes a while. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Scott. I'll be expecting logo or an envelope from you next time I see you. Um, all right, moving forward, Austin, SDK, anything you wanna bring up from the working group call yesterday? Sure, I'll do a quick recap. Uh, there are a few of us who are working on cloud events, uh, SDKs for cloud events. We have a few implementations in the works, uh, JavaScript, Go, and Java. And someone was doing a Python one, but they weren't at the last, uh, they weren't at the last couple of meetings, so. Um, anyway, we're, we're cruising along. Uh, we have our, our roadmap laid out in the cloud events design uh, proposal document. And um, what we did during the last sync meeting is we shared our progress and we shared kind of pain points uh, where we need additional clarity and our learnings. Um, we have a couple of things that we kind of need some, we still need to figure out. Uh, the first is how to design the SDK in a way that it can accommodate the spec as it evolves. You know, if we're going to be building kind of APIs, um, you know, getters, setters on cloud events uh, in, in the SDK experience, how is that going to be affected when the specification um, evolves? So that's something we're, we're still trying to figure out. And also we realize that there's a bit of a, a challenge in how we handle all that evolution also with the transport and binding specifications. Um, and how those are going to be evolved. Because if the cloud event spec is changing and the transport and the binding specs are also changing and we're trying to build the SDKs around this, it's, uh, um, it's a bit complicated uh, as of right now. So getting some clarity as to how we're going to version the cloud event specification and the transport binding specifications uh, would help us figure out how to, how to design the SDKs. And one other big learning we had was that <clears throat> We felt that uh, extensions, in addition to just being custom properties on the cloud events envelope, should be an experience that's kind of carried through into the SDKs. And we, you know, we kind of pioneered this idea of almost like middleware or hooks, uh, extra modules of code that you could add to the SDK um, that would kind of extend the ability of the SDK in what, it, what you can do with it um, so a good couple examples are, you know, maybe if someone is making a middleware product, they could uh, add in, you know, their extension for that middleware product into the SDK. Um, and if the SDK has a published method, uh, it would use that specific middleware to send out the event as well as put custom attributes in the extensions area or as extensions on the cloud events envelope. Um, so we wanted to think about that experience kind of, you know, not just as custom data anymore, but also, um, code and logic that you can add into the SDK. And I think if we do that and we think about that first, uh, when we're just architecting the SDK, that is gonna set this effort up uh, for success because that is a great place for vendors, for the community um, to add, to build right custom code uh, to extend this and do more with cloud events. Uh, it's a great place for uh, companies and teams to bake in, like to write their own um, extensions to ensure that uh, whoever is doing this event-driven development with cloud events can follow standard kind of organizational policies. Um, it's a great way to put app-specific information, make app-specific extensions. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of use cases for that. We realize that we want to figure out that extension story in the beginning of the SDK. So we're working on that right now. Sounds like I got a question. I have a question. Is this considered um, a SDK or the SDK? Like, is it expected that like, if we want to do something different with it, we could create our own SDK that would um, still conform to cloud events, but would do something slightly different somewhere? Um, I don't know if we're in a position to say this. I mean, we're gonna, we're, we're, we've decided we're gonna make SDKs for cloud events. It sounds like we're also gonna put them in the cloud events uh, org on GitHub. And they will be SDKs for cloud events. And uh, I think they've given that they'll be there, they'll have a lot of community support, but in no way does that prohibit anyone from making their own 
their own SDKs and their own custom things. Um, additionally, that ex the extensions story, if we get this right, should be a great way for you to really customize it to do all types of things, um, if that's of interest to you. So you know, I feel free to always write your own code and stuff. We're just kind of wor working on this stuff together to come out with a similar implementation across uh, different languages so that you know, developers have an easy experience. I'd also say, you know, be sure to, to uh, work with the team that's designing the SDKs, and if there's changes that you want, work with us to get those put into the, the cloud event uh, repos in the first place. Fair enough. Yeah, and one thing, I, I, um, Austin did talk about this, uh, just to hammer the point home, but one thing we, we tried to talk about yesterday was, um, obviously we're gonna have different SDKs for each language. Um, and we wanted to make sure that there was some consistency across the various language SDKs so that even though the, the exact mechanism by which you may do certain actions within each language could look radically different based upon the language constructs because you want it to feel natural to that language, the overall feature or semantics of what you're trying to do should be consistent across all the SDKs if possible. That way, no matter what language you're working on, you should be able to do the same type of action and get the same net result on the wire, for example. Um, having, having said that, from my point of view, while I agree with what Austin said, anybody's obviously free to write their own SDK. Um, if, as an example, there is already a Go SDK sort of that the group is kind of working on, it'd be really great if someone who wanted to, do an, uh, wanted to work on a Go SDK tried their best to work with that current one if they could. Right? But if for some reason they found that they had to fork it or you know, go their own way, obviously they, they can't choose to. But as a community, it'd be great if we could sort of rally around you know, what we're producing here and not have a whole bunch of different versions for the same language. Yep, at the very least, Rachel, there's a Cloud Events SDK, Google Doc. Feel free to just jump in and add some comments. Uh, just look at the milestones. If there's anything you need or think we should consider early on, that would help, uh, you know, whatever you're looking for in the use cases that you want to accommodate, uh, let us know. Um, and there's a lot of ways you could use this. I mean, you know, either building an extension, a custom extension for the SDK of, or of course, wrapping the SDK with, you know, with your own SDK or, or something else. I think over time, this thing will provide a lot of value. And it's not just about um, kind of instantiating events or transporting them. It's, it's also about validating them. Um, it's also about kind of testing them all that stuff. So, you know, I think this, if we work on this together and we could collaborate as much as possible, we could, we could really create something, something great that'll facilitate event driven design, um, which I think a lot of people need in general. Uh, that's it. Other than Doug is going to create a, a repo um, and we're going to start pushing our work in there. It's not final by any means. We're just kind of putting it all in the same place so we could have a centralized discussion. And uh, as we, you know, approach the first version here, then we'll figure out, you know, whether to move it, just move each implementation into separate repos and whatnot. But, uh, but look out for that. Um, I haven't gone through this uh, SDK design doc yet, but um, just a quick question: Does it um, include a section on the on functionality of that will be covered by the SDK? Like what kind of? I mean. Features will become. Yes, Kathy. Uh, absolutely. There, there are initiatives. We started off with drafting initiatives, all the things that we thought the SDK should do. Uh, we stack ranked them, prioritized them, and then we filtered them into um, basically a, a little roadmap uh, that's organized around SDK versions. So the initiatives are all the things that we want the SDK to do, and the milestones and scope is, is basically our roadmap. Um, and what we're focused on in the initial version, and then the next version, and the version after that. Okay, uh, is there like, okay, so here this, okay, just a quick question. It define APIs, is there like an API to expose on the, uh, the what's that, the metadata defined in the um, cloud events? Yeah, that's a, that's a very loose description of that, so I apologize for that. Um, I think we've kind of converged on a few ideas as to what that looks like. Um, I'd say to get more info about that, just look out for the Cloud Events repo because we're going to start pushing our implementations there, and you'll see kind of some of the APIs that we're, that we're focused on initially. Okay. All right, anything else, Kathy? 
Um, yeah, um, I, that's it. I'm going to look at the, I mean, I guess, when the code was put there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yes. All right, any other questions for Austin? All right, cool. Thank you very much, Austin. And I'll try to get that repo created today. Fantastic. Yep. All right, Kathy, would you like to update the group on the workflow workgroup progress? Yes. Um, so we, in last meeting, we went through uh, some existing offerings for the workflow. Uh, one is function graph, the other is uh, open risk. And yeah, we have a discussion on that. And then uh, we went also uh, went through review comments on the, on the workflow proposal uh, document, document. And so I think we agree that we're going to um, post more com comments and poke holes uh, at, the, at that, uh, that draft. And in the next meeting, we're going to you know, go through uh, all the review comments and then discuss it and reach consensus. All right, any questions for Kathy? Okay, so, um, just a, a shout out. Uh, the, the proposal doc that Kathy has, um, I know there have been some comments made in there, but I think it might be good to have uh, more feedback. So if you guys get a chance, please do take a look at that document and provide feedback. It would help uh, the work group. All right, before we move forward, any other, any last questions, comments for Kathy? All right, cool. Um, I don't think there's any in issue maintenance issues we need to work with right now, so we can jump into PR stuff. So let's see. Now, last week's call, Clemens talked about this qualifying protocols and encoding document. And we talked about how this document was basically going to define the bar that we were gonna uh, follow or use to measure whether we adopt a encoding or transport binding uh, specification uh, into our work group. And um, so people were supposed to go off, review this, make sure they were okay with the bar that he was defining here. Um, I believe the only comments in here, I had a couple of wordsmithy kind of things, we can ignore those. The only other comment that was added to the doc was this one. I think, um, Ryan, was this you? I can't remember if that's, yeah, this is Ryan. Ryan, did you want to talk to this one at all? Ryan, are you still there? Okay, maybe Ryan stepped away for a sec. Um, so you, obviously you can, you can read it yourself, talking about quali qualitative versus quantitative um, criteria. Uh, I, Sorry, I just oh. get myself on mute. There you go. Hey, Ryan, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just because I, I remember last time we were talking about Clemens is going to make it a list so that it would be more or less subjective. We can go through the list and uh, clearly say if it is meet the bar or not. I'm not that, if I rem remember correctly, that's what he is supposed to do. But I'm not sure I, I see clearly a list one, two, three, four. You, you meet that bar. And also thing is he kind of put it more uh, descriptive way that it could be implemented. For example, the one that I, I mentioned, I think, let me see, it says the bar is it, that implementation should be uh, with my comment. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I, I was trying to do do do, whoops. Something like- um, There it is. The, uh, is defined a fashion that allows alternative implementations. It seems to me that this is pretty loose, like what is allowed, it's not allowed. When he was talking about it, he was a little bit, feels to me like he was a little bit more concrete. Like he said something like, uh, it needs to be implemented by two different organizations, something like that. Yeah, I think when he was talking about that, I don't remember for sure what he was saying. He wanted to have a firm number in there, or he was talking in general about how some standards bodies, like I think maybe Oasis or W3C. Something um, like that. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they have a firm number that you have to meet. Um, and also, but this is just allows, right? So it can be 
no one is doing anything but still allows. And the allows seems to me is, again, pretty subject. Which one is allowed? Which one is not allowed? Um, it's just my two cents. feels like it kind of tuned down a lot then before. Yeah, I mean, you are correct. It, he does keep it kind of loose there. Um, this, is, this, this is difficult because obviously Clemens is not on the call. He's on vacation. But I, and you're right. He does not have a formal sort of bulleted list of things. I believe these two paragraphs uh, would probably be the closest thing to his bulleted list, right? Um, yeah. If, if, if you'd like to see a little bit more uh, specificity around what the criteria is, and in other words, basically like a bulleted list that says these three things must be met, right? And concrete terms, number of implementations, that kind of stuff. Could you add another comment with um, concrete proposal for text that you'd like to see in there? That way we can all look at it and, and consider it? Sure, yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I can do that. Okay, because yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know, I mean, obviously we'd like to get this issue resolved at some point, but I don't know if we're necessarily in a hurry that we have to do it immediately, other than there are two other PRs that are kind of blocked on this, you know, new specifications. But mm -hmm. I know those owners probably want to get it resolved soon, but I don't think as a working group we have to get this resolved today. So I, I think it's fair for you to take some time to, to figure out, you know, what text you'd like to see in there, and then we can consider it on next week's call, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. I, 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 do, I do that this week. Okay, cool. Thank you. Are there any other comments from, from people's review of this? Are people okay with the general direction? Assuming we can satisfy Ryan's concern about not having it, you know, spelled out in like a bulleted list that's easy to, to parse. Um, does everything sort of seem like it's, it's pointing in the right direction here? Hey, hey Doug, this is Colin. Hey, I, you know, I just wanted to echo Ryan's concerns as, as well. You know, I, I have some of the same concerns. And then, um, you know, also if there are going to be, you know, let's say blessed transports, is there going to be an option for other transports to get in as well, just to, to allow more people to integrate uh, and, and perhaps add their own bindings into cloud events? Um, are you talking about other people being able to add stuff to our repo or just write it in general and, and host it on their own? Just in general, host it on their own, almost like a, a guidelines or anything. Am I making sense? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think what, what could we say? Cause obviously anybody can do whatever they want, wherever they want. Um, right. Right. Um, if you could think of some text that might be useful to provide some guidance around that, I think it'd be useful to consider it. Uh, I, I'm always open to, to stuff like that. It's just a question of whether we can get the right text, right? Sure, sure. Okay. I don't know. What, what other people think? I mean, we can't stop people, but so should we provide any kind of guidance? Okay. Is there any objection to trying to look at seeing if we can provide some guidance? Okay. I'm not hearing any objection to the general idea, at least seeing what you come up with. All right, thanks, Doug. Okay. All right. Any other comments, questions on this one? Okay. So let's see what Ryan comes back with, and then we'll hopefully, hopefully Ryan, if you can get that in there um, by like Tuesday of next week. Um, yeah, uh, it, yeah, I'll, I'll do that definitely okay. this week, before yeah. the end of this week. Yeah, because that way, if people like the text, then that should give people enough time to, to review it and feel comfortable and don't feel too rushed. Yeah, so I basically just to make sure we are honestly I'm going to basically kind of just that bullet rephrase it and uh, give a proposal in the comments like kind of the bullets yeah I mean, basically I, if you could do an, a, a comment in there that basically rewrites these two paragraphs yeah in yeah. a form that makes you feel comfortable that it's clearer in terms of what the criteria is I think that's that'd be great yeah 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 I think the idea is just so that we can debate now and in the future with this list, it's let, no need to debate on any other things like could be relatively clear. We just go through this and say if this meets the bottom. Yes, yeah, because the last thing we want to do is have people think that we're, we're either playing games or doing some sort of politics around who we let in and who we don't. And we want to make sure we have consistent rules that we follow. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, so if you could just show the exact text that you want to see in there, that way, again, there's no ambiguity on what we're voting on, then I could, if we agree to it, I could always just do a copy and paste and update as PR. Yeah, sure. Because you don't want me to wordsmith this stuff. It'd be better if you did. <laughs> yeah, sure.
Sounds, sounds good. Okay. All right. Any other comments, questions? All right. Cool. Thank you much. All right. In that case, we'll skip the next two PRs um, since they're based or they're gated on Clemens PR. So next up is Kathy. Would you like to discuss your PR that has now been renamed to add a properties or rename it to properties or I'm sorry, add properties attribute. Would you like to talk to this one since there've been some changes? Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, so this is about, um, so we are going to have a, a, a properties that, you know, for the, um, for the event producer to put, you know, extra um, information and you know, he think it's needed on to this um, properties on um, the, I mean, the contents of the property will be key value pairs, um, but it does not, you know, have any mandated definition of the keys. Um, for example, uh, a producer could put an event identification label, which will be used by the service platform or service by the event consumer to correlate the event with other types of events uh, associated with the same uh, service application. Um, this is just an example. It could be used for other um, purpose too. Um, of course, when the event producer add the a new key value pair, he should, you know he should be um, she should make sure to use a name that is descriptive enough and also does not overlap with other keys. Um, that's pretty much about it. And there in the extension document, you know, there's some define some uh, attributes, and if you know. If the producer like, he can put that as the keys in this, uh, inside these properties. Uh, this is an optional field, and then you know, and there's some there's an example of how you know uh, to put uh, this uh, key value pair into these properties. If you scroll down, uh, Doug, yeah, these are just like some examples. So I think the, the net of this PR uh, when compared to the previous versions of this PR is that this is just renaming the extensions bag to be called properties and to make it clear that um, this isn't just for the things that we've defined in our extensions.md file. This is open for third party people, other vendors, whoever, to include it for other things such as the correlation stuff that Kathy's talked about. It's for more for the event producer who would like to use the cloud event. And then if they think, you know, there are some key information information missing uh, for their, you know, um, categories of use cases, they can put some um, key value pair there. All right, any questions? I'm, I'm still uh, not clear on how this is different from extensions. It's just a word change. It's just a word change. Okay. Because when you described what the what would be in properties here, it sounded ex exactly like what was in extensions already. Yeah, I think there was some confusion around how the extensions bag was meant to be used. In particular, I think there was some there were some people in the group who thought that it was only for stuff that we defined in extensions.md because they both shared the same word extension. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was, and I think this is an attempt to, uh, to clarify that this really is for other things and not just the stuff that we might define in that document. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I appreciate Kathy's effort here. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the extensions word, personally, actually. Uh, it's fairly clear. Property seems a bit more confusing to me because it's, uh, it seems like everything is already a, a property. Uh, in the envelope there. And we were just kind of rolling out this nice SDK experience around this whole extensions concept. And this this um, kind of might confuse the story a little bit. Not sure, I haven't really thought it through. But those are just my immediate thoughts. I think that really depends on whether or not extensions move to the top level or not. So given that we've there's been a lot of talk about that, I think that properties and extensions, would we would want to be able to delineate between them. Uh, in that scenario, and so that we could identify them as two separate concepts. I kind of agree with that. I think this is something that many developers would want to use. Additionally, identifying the source. I mean, it's it's one thing to say extensions. Uh, my my 
My take is if we take it extensions, it will be more like most developers are not going to implement it. Hey, it's vendor dependent. But if we make it part of something more, I think this is what developers will use. Hey, you want to, it's, it's one thing, an event has come out, but you want to identify more. There are more properties related to that event. This is my take. I also think this, this particular property ends up being extremely useful uh, when, let's say, the data itself ends up being you know, binary encoded or you know, whatever, you're, you're passing you know, some file along, et cetera. Uh, this, is a, this ends up being a great place for the producer or for the, you know, the application level code to be able to drop uh, additional metadata that can describe or, or assist with uh, that data block. Yeah. Would it be worthwhile actually calling it, say, um, application properties or producer properties? Would that help at all? I, I think that might try to scope it too much uh, because one of the, one of the things. It, well, let me back up. So, Austin was is is right. Right. This is just a name change. What can go in there does not change at all. But I think what you're hearing based upon people's comments is that. The, the word that we choose might imply certain things to certain people. So for example, when you saw the word extension, some people look at that as, well, oh, I'm not defining an extension. I'm just adding a property. So obviously I shouldn't put it in there. Other people look at the, at the word extension as it's just a bag of stuff. So yeah, that's where I put extra properties, right? And so it kind of depends on your history around how you've used these words in the past. And so I think we need to try to find a word that's generic enough to say other stuff goes here. And, and we're not necessarily saying it's just for one particular use. And I think that's what Kathy was trying to do here with, with the word properties, is try to find a generic term that kind of allows for all those uses that we sort of are touching on. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of yeah. like this direction that we're, we're sort of heading right now, which is you know, if we were to refer to extensions as basically extensions to the top level specification the, or the, you know, the top level uh, you know, cloud events wrapper, which is new properties at the top level. And then this properties bag is, is effectively you know, usable for dropping pretty much anything into uh, that the application may wanna, wanna add. Um, I think that helps draw a little bit of a clear delineation there. Well, let's not talk about the, that other PR that's out there. I think that's a separate topic. Um, Cause that may, or may not, that may or may not happen. So let, let's deal with this one on its own first. <laughs> this one is also limiting what could be an extension the old extension is not just a name change, it also limits to only key value pairs. So does the word value imply just a string to you? Because I interpret it as anything. Yeah, it does. I don't consider key value to be, to allow any objects or arrays, but I might be using the terms wrong. No, I, I know you're not alone because Scott had a similar, I think had a similar comment in the chat. So Kathy, was it your intent to have this be only string values or could it be any kind of value? So it's, a, it's already say it's type map, right? So it could be other values, right? But it's like a key and then the value, the value could be, you know, will follow the map on type. It, so uh, would that be primitive be types? Any primitive yeah. types? But I think the uh, yeah. So the 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 type is the map. So whatever define the map, right? So, but I would like to say it's like a key value. So there's a key there. There's a value there. But it's because we cannot predict, you know, how different producers is going to, you know, what kind of actual information, an event producer would like to put that in. So I think the key point is we do not have any mandated definition of the keys. So for one producer, they can put, for example, they can put a a location information. Another producer, they can put a, a like employee ID, and uh, maybe for another event producer, they could put a long application, you know, ID something like that. So, um, but I think for to support, you know, a um, lot of um, IoT use cases, and also other use cases, not just restricted um, to IoT. I, I I think you know as an event producer. Um, we would like to put some, I mean, people would like to put some additional information um, to help with um, support of that use case. Just a quick thought, it, it may be worth uh, in our uh, uh, the type definitions up here just to 
uh, maybe you know, go the Java direction here and, and use angle brackets for declaring uh, you know, the, the types contained inside the map. I think that would help uh, clarify a little bit those types of things for people. Okay, but there's a, actually there's a definition of what type means, you know, um, because the, what maps what map means, um, because when you go up, there are other there are other um, um, uh, attributes that are of map, which yeah, which is defined here. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, just just want to clarify, is this replacing extension or this is another one alongside extension? It, it's replacing. Oh, it. The extension is deleted. Um, oh. This is like, a, it's not just a simple replacement, I would say. But, you know, we're going to define the properties, uh, property uh, attribute. And for things that was in the extension MD, they are, where are, are they going to be? They can still be in there. She talks about that right here. Yeah. So yeah, this is a uh, oh. okay. So extension done is a separate document. So that's why we do not call extension here because I know some people are uh, confused about you know the relation between this extension MD and this extension. Uh, there's no hard you know how to say binding there here. I just said, you know, yeah, I, I know. So that's why I think that's another reason I think, you know, um, change to properties. Sorry, what, what was the confusion with extensions? I, I think, you know, uh, I think Ryan just raised, you know, is that this is, if we call these properties, we call it extension. Is that the same thing as the extension.md document? What's address was defined there? Um, Actually, so I think, you know, I, I mm -hmm. So this has become kind of like a superset of extension and what other things like the producer want to put in. Is that kind of like it, that? It's not like a, a superset. It's just, you know, some of if this producer would like to put um, on some attributes defined in the extension.md and put it into this property, it's fine, but not necessarily. So he has to put, you know, uh, anything defined in the attention.md inside uh, these properties. But if this caused confusion, I can remove this, you know, this last, uh, um, because I, I myself also feel if put in there, people might just think uh, there's some relationship between this property bag and that extension.md. But actually, actually there's no binding here. Well, I, I agree with you that, that there's not the, the relationship in the sense that <clears throat> Um, extension.md defines the only set of things that can go in there, but I do think it, I do, I do think we need to make it clear that it is one possible set of things that can go in there, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's how it is written and said, you know, yeah. it's some possible, yeah, it's, but there's no real hard relationship, say, oh, these two are really related. You can, a event producer can put, you know, um, the key, inf the information which he, which you know, the producers think are key to these events, um, for supporting uh, their use cases. Not necessary, you know. They need to put, you know, some attributes in the extension .md to inside these properties. But if they see some attributes in the extension .md which can serve their purpose or which they think, you know, yeah, it's useful, they can put it in here. Um, it confused me a little bit more actually. So if they see something in extension MD, they do not think it should be in these properties. Where do they put it? There's another. Oh, that's in the extension dot MD. Yeah. Um, no, in the, like in the in the in the event itself. No, Ryan. The, the in the thing... event itself, they do not need to put anything you know in here if they don't think it's important. They do not need to put into their events. No, no, I think what Ryan is asking, where should the extension.md properties go? And Ryan, the answer is into this properties bag. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Should be here, right? If, right. Yeah. So that just seems like, yeah. So if they, for the properties that in the extension MD defined should, be, should come here and things that that's not defined. And if the producer 
feels like they want to add something, it also goes there, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. okay. That's just one last clarify. Yeah, that's why in my mind, this is just a word change. Yeah. <laughs> If, if I could talk briefly about the, the history of extensions, the reason why we came up with that title um, back in, it's like November, last November, uh, was because we wanted this event story to be similar to OpenAPI story. And OpenAPI has this concept of extensions and they just say it's custom properties. Um, I think that's, that's all it is. And to kind of have, to kind of mirror that experience in the event driven design world, we thought would be helpful. And I understand that everybody um, has different, you know, experiences with uh, terminology and interprets things differently. Um, but that was just some context there. I, if this is just a name change, uh, properties to me is a, is a little bit more confusing maybe. And I, I know we're getting into the naming, naming discussion here, but uh, I don't know, something like custom, um, might be a little bit more helpful. I think that the name thing is the only thing I'm getting hung up on. And then of course, like we just, we've got to uh, resolve this issue ASAP so that we can start building stuff on, on top of this. Cause this is, you know, continuing to change this stuff is gonna block like the SDK design and, and, and a lot of other stuff I imagine. Yeah. So we are running a little low on time. And so what, um, since this was just put in there yesterday, obviously I think it's too soon to like vote on it, plus all the questions people have. Um, I think it's fair to, to for this at least another week or so. But please look at what she wrote here, think about it. If you'd like to see some changes, please don't wait for next week's phone call. Add a comment in here and suggest alternative text or alternative name. You know, it, maybe there's another name out there that can allow, that's less confusing for people, that encompasses both types of things we're trying to do here. Um, but please review this when you get a chance. Um, we don't want to stay silent on this one. We want to get this one quick, uh, resolved as quickly as possible. So with that, any last minute, 30 second discussions on this before we move on? Okay. Now we don't have time to do a deep dive, but I do want to draw people's attention to an issue that I opened up last night. And this actually is a result of, <clears throat> excuse me, the SDK workgroup call yesterday that Austin was running. Um, there's a whole question about how are we going to version our specifications? Uh, so for example, do the, does the JSON and HTTP binding spec uh, stay in sync version number wise with the core spec, right? So everything's always at 1.0, everything's at 1.1 or, or not. So for example, if we end up changing the HTTP binding in some breaking way, but we didn't actually change the core spec, what do we do? Does the HTTP spec become 2.0, but everything else is at 1.0? Do we change everything to be 2.0, right? There's a lot of questions here that need to be thought about and resolved at some point uh, before we make too much more progress going forward, or at least before we reach 1.0 status. We need to have a clear rule in place for when we're going to version these specifications, whether they're linked, whether they're separate. But we don't have time to necessarily do a deep dive here. I just wanted to bring up the issue for people to start thinking about it, and please comment on the issue, because I do think we need to get this one resolved in the not-too-distant future. But are there any questions about the concept of what this issue is trying to bring up that I can answer very quickly for people? Okay, cool. Thank you guys very much. So please comment on that when you get a chance. And I don't think we have time for any other deep dive discussion. Uh, at some point, I do want to talk about what are extensions and what use cases we want to support relative to extensions. So please, I know some people have been commenting on the doc. Thank you for that. Um, I'm a little worried that most people seem to be heading in the same direction, which normally would be a good thing, but based upon previous comments I've heard from people, I'm surprised I haven't had more people saying no to certain things. So that, that tells me that not everybody's necessarily reviewing the doc. So please review that, especially if you have strong opinions about where should we should allow extensions. And with that, I think we're, I think we're pretty much out of time. Um, before I go back and do the roll call again one last time, are there any other topics that are short that people want to bring up for discussion? Okay, in that case, quick final roll call. Uh, Farad, are you still there? What about Eric? Eric. Sorry, Farad, I'm, I'm still here. here. Eric, Eric could Eric. only join for the first 30 minutes because he had a staff meeting. Okay, I th okay. And uh, Stanley, are you there? Hey, Doug, can you hear me? Yeah, who's that? Yeah, that's me. Oh, Stanley. Okay, good. All right, Louis. I think I heard you. Neil, yeah, yeah. there. 
Yep, Neil from Confluent. I'm here. Right. Thanks, Ed. Matt Wachowski, you still there? I'm here. Excellent. And Dan Rusanova. Dan, did you drop? I may have lost Dan. Okay. I'll give him credit. I saw him on the, on the chat, so I'll give him credit the same way I'm giving Eric credit because I did see him. All right. Anybody that I miss? All right. Cool. Thank you guys very much. And please do look at those proposals. 